Good morning, everyone. In this episode, we're gonna take a look at the Fimi X8 SE 2020 edition. Now, you're probably wondering, he never brings a box when he does reviews. Well, I have a box because it doesn't come with a case, so I carry it around in this box. So what's different with the Fimi SE X8 2020 edition? I'm reaching for the drone here. And here it is. Do you see any difference from the previous model? Looks the same shape, you know, same design. If I flip it this way, looks the same that way. And what about if I show you the bottom? Same amount of sensors, yeah all looks the same so uh what is different besides it being extremely white and throwing off the white balance on this camera but man do i look tanned so the only differences are range it's up to eight kilometers now they added hdr for the video 35 minute flight time i think they made it lighter you'll see that in the unboxing watch that at the end like i say it's an enhanced version the camera resolution and everything else is still the same a lot of people usually jump to that and say is that all different nope there's no 4k 60 on this it's still 4k 30. it's a drone that's in the 450 to 500 dollar range so for a lot of you out there it's probably the drone to have it has an awful lot of flight features that i'm going to show you in this video a matter of fact this drone is so similar to the previous model other than the enhancements that you could go watch my video on the previous model and see everything going on and uh, i have a tractor over there that's making a lot of noise all right so what i'm going to show you now i got birds flying around me thinking i'm going to give them food so what i'm going to show you now is some video footage of me just flying this around to show you what this can do and then we'll get right into the review here we go Now, even the controller is identical, no change there. So right now I'm gonna show you quickly the interface. So the app you wanna use for this is called the Fimi Navi 2020. So you should see a display on my screen. I'm gonna start it. So mine is telling me I have another firmware update. I don't know how many firmware updates I've already updated this thing with. It seems like firmware updates keep coming as they fix different things, but uh, I'm gonna bypass that and just go right into enter device. Here we go. Okay, that's different, never saw that. If you've bought insurance for your device, then you have to enter the code, so ignore. All right, so you're going to have to excuse a pile of noises. I don't know if you can hear them through my microphone. I have a guy over there mowing the lawn. I've got a guy back there flying FPV. Uh, and then I'm over here trying to talk and do this review. So we'll see what we can do here. All right, so take a look at my phone screen and I'll walk you through it really quick. Here we go. So over on the very top left, you have zero. And then followed by that to the right, you have zero. That's one is your height and one is your distance away from you. And then you have your speed control. Then you have your ready to go that I'm in GPS mode. Always make sure it says GPS before you fly because if not uh, it's going to toilet pole and do all sorts of weird things um, it needs about i've noticed about 14 satellites to be happy if it only has 12 satellites or 13 it's not as happy it tends to like uh, fly all over the place in the air so 14 or 15 is good i've got 15 right now let's move all the way to the right uh, you can see our battery is over there i have 93 percent remaining and with 93 percent you can get quite a lot of flight time next i'll go into the settings menu it's a gear on the top right and that's where we'd set up all our settings for this you will notice one thing i want to show you here as i move down i'll put it right in the center sport mode if you want to put this in sport mode you have to pick it in the settings here to turn on off there is no external switch and going down the left the first one are all the settings for your drone itself and then you go down to your controller right here you can set your five buttons you have a five-way switch on your controller it's over here then you go down to your gimbal and you can do all sorts of calibrations then your battery right there and then finally just some general settings your flight records your map your unit firmware updates maintenance mode and so on next the one that everybody wants to know about is our recording settings so let's go into that that's the three little lines up and down 
and click on that. And here we go, I'm in auto mode. At the very top, you can put it in manual mode and do all the manual settings. I'm not gonna do that. So let's go, the first one is video. Here's my video mode. So it shows right here, I'm in video. This is where you change it to HDR. See, mine says video. If I go like that, you can see HDR, then lapse. So I'll go back. Uh, next one, we have our video size. You can do 4K, 30, 25, and 24, but you cannot do 60. You can also do 2.7, 1080p, and 720. The video quality is one I never understood. I don't even know why they placed that there. I've got people behind me here. So the video quality, you've got high, medium, and normal. If you want top-notch video, put it on high. Next one going down is your white balance, like that truck behind me, and this here controller is white. So if you can get the whites correct in a video, then all the other colors are correct. I do find the Fimi, if the light changes as it does here, it goes bright sun and dark, sometimes the white balance will go wonky on me, like I'll get purplish colors, which is very strange. So you have to adjust that. Next one down, you have your metering mode. That's for your exposure control. So if you meter in the center, then only things in the center will get the right uh, exposure control. If you meter for the whole thing, then everything gets the right exposure control. Finally, down below, you have color. And that one there I find as well. General sometimes just, you know, the colors are a little bit too blah. So Vivid actually works quite well. So Vivid is pretty decent for your colors on this drone. And the last one on there is your encoding format. So you have 264 and 265. If I click on that, you can see they're both there. 265 if you're new to drones. 265 will give you a better, better uh, image bit rate and everything, everything coming in and compression and you'll lose less image data. However, if you have a crappy computer at home that's not really good, you really can't watch it back because it's going to be very, very stuttery. So if you have a crappy computer, put it on 264. Next, going down the side of the screen, you can change from video to camera right there. I just switched it back and forth. Next is your record button. I think the FPV guy just wiped out. Next one down is your pictures. Uh, so you can see what video or photos you took. And then the one we're gonna use an awful lot in this video is the one I call the monkey head. It looks like a monkey head with two antennas sticking out. I call that the monkey head. I have no idea what that's supposed to symbolize, but uh, I call it the monkey head. And when you click on that, that's all your smart features. You can't really see them here because you have to be flying for them to be in use. So we're gonna do that in this video. All right, to take off, pull these in and bring it up. There we go. All right, the Fimi's up there. I'll show you a few of the smart features. Here we go. First one, everybody's gonna use a smart track and we'll go to normal active track. So there we go. I'm just gonna draw a box around me and I just have to hit go. It should find me and watch this if I walk towards it. So say I'm talking and walking this way, it should fly backwards, which it is. So I'm walking, talking, doing a vlog here, looking up, it's going backwards. Just remember there's no obstacle avoidance on this one. I don't have it very high. If I turn around and walk the opposite direction, it should follow me as well. Go this way, go back over by my table. I'm just making sure it's above the trees that are in this area. So I'll bring it over here into another field. Now, if you look at the left-hand side of my screen, you'll see there's my three active tracks. So I'm in the one where a person's walking over on the left and uh, there's the other two there, parallel and lock. So let me see if I could switch into parallel. I'm at the parallel track now. The drone flies to the side and I can just walk to the side like this. It will fly parallel to me. So it stays up there. See how it's going sideways? I'm gonna to try to walk and keep pointing at it. it. Stays up there, so that's pretty good. And I can go back this way. And then I could do this. I could say, okay, you followed me for quite a bit. Now I wanna stop here and do my yoga. So I gotta put it on lock. And where's lock? There's lock. So I'm in lock and in lock mode, it can just sit there. It won't move anywhere. I can walk around. It will just spin and follow me, but it won't active track me if I walk away out in the woods or anything. It's stuck right where it is. And you say, well, what good is that? Well, they added a nice feature to that, whereas you can spin it. So let me see here. If you look at my screen on the bottom, you can see the orbit. So there we go. It should orbit now. There we are. So if I stand here or continue doing what I was doing, it will just keep on orbiting me. Next one to show you on here is Droney, but I won't do Droney, I'll do Rocket. So to do Rocket, all I have to do is bring this over to me. So first thing you do is draw a box around me. I'm right below it. That's good. Next, over on the arrow, top right. Then where it says auto return, click that, hit go. Three, two, one, countdown. It should go away up in the air. And there we go. So if I hold my GoPro here, you can see it going away up in the air and it's filming me. 
It'll get to about 30 meters. I think that's the height I set, and then it will come back to me. All right, the next one to show you would be the next one in line, tap to fly. That works by a map, so it shows me the map. Now all I have to do is I see my drone is pointing that way, so I'm going to put a line over here, and it says it's about eight meters away. Sure, I want it to fly that way, so I'll say, yeah, go ahead, do your thing. There she goes. Hopefully I didn't pick any trees. So if I was going to expand that map, here we go. So if I could see other things, I could have it fly to different points on my map with that. That's all that is to tap the fly. I kept it pretty simple here. Orbit, we've already done it in another mode. It's pretty simple. It just orbits around you. It's the most common one. Spiral is the one that most people use instead of orbit. So for spiral, I'm going to go over to the structure over here and you can see the guy flying FPV at the same time. Setting center and now do the radius. I'll bring it back right about here, nice and wide. There we go. Put the camera on which you want to film. I want to film that structure. And then just hit the uh, little arrow at the top right, hit go, and there we go. We should now do a spiral. A spiral is an orbit that rises. So you're going to see the drone's going to orbit around that structure, and at the same time, it's going to rise up. So I'm just going to let it go for a bit, uh, and then from there, I'll go into the next one. What's the next one we have on here? We did all those. Flight mode, cinematic mode. Okay, this one here is confusing as heck. Now, most people think in cinematic mode, you're gonna go nice, slow, sweeping shots. Not what you get on here. Instead, it flies the normal speed, but it has no brakes. <laughs> takes a long time to stop, and it takes sweeping corners. So let me show you really quick here. So here we go. If I move it forward, watch how fast she moves. Still goes fast, but it won't stop as fast. Watch, I'll bring it back, and brakes. And there we go. Everything is supposed to be less jerky and abrasive. I don't know. I haven't really noticed it in this, but you know, the video comes out okay. I think the one we all want is tripod mode. So let's change to that. Go to tripod mode. Okay, I've got it nice and low for tripod mode. Hit okay. This is the one most of us love. This is where you can fly it nice and low. And it is super slow. So there we go. Slow, slow, slow. I'm going full speed here, full tilt on my controller, turning it. Gives you a nice, nice, nice cinematic type flight. And you come back this way. There we go. So that's tripod mode. All right, next one to show you on here is course lock. This one I love. It's an old DJI one. If you are old to DJI drones, you'll remember this one. So here we go. Go to course lock. Pick a direction. That's my direction, right? So I hit OK. Hit OK again. Now watch what happens. When I move forward, which way is it going to move? It's going to move that way, right? Straight ahead. So here we go. Forward with my joystick. There we go. Okay, bring it back. Remember, remember that's my direction. What happens if I turn the drone this way and I push forward on the joystick? Is it going to go forward? No, it's going to go that way because that's the course lock. So watch, forward. And there she goes, sideways. So that's what course lock is. It's the old DJI. I call it a lot of times uh, how to smash your drone into a object if you don't know what you're doing. So be careful with course lock. Now the next one I want to show you on here is fixed wing and you have to be very careful with this one because you can actually call it the fly away mode. You can actually have your drone fly away on you. So let me show you really quick. Fixed wing, hit OK. It's in fixed wing mode now and it won't take effect unless I'm moving forward at a certain speed. So I've got the record on. Let's pick it up. So I'm flying and watch what happens when I turn to the right. Whoa, look at that, it's like a plane. Oh my God, that is craziness. <laughs> That's like DJI used to have that, right? And you could do the same thing when you're flying and going to the left, whoa, and then back to the right. It can make your stomach upset. All right, so here's the problem. When I let go of the joysticks, look it, it's still flying. It's like flying away on me. You have to stop it. So hit your little X and take it out of fixed wing mode or else it will fly away on you. Let's see what else we have. Go to the bottom is SAR. So in SAR is search and rescue. So click that. There we go. Watch when I go to the map in SAR. Now I have coordinates, longitude and latitude where my drone is. So that's if you find somebody, then you can actually see where they are with longitude and latitude. You can also zoom into them. It says if you use this dial here, you can do a zoom. I don't know what the max is. Can here, can I? 1.7. Oh, there we go. I'm just sliding on the left. There we go. So I'll bring the camera up. It's probably a digital zoom because there's no optical thing in here. So there's my head zoomed in. And uh, where are we? There we go. Well, looks pretty cool. Got some nice depth of field happening here. Sort of. Oh, well, actually, everything's in focus. So let me zoom out. And so if you found somebody with SAR, you could use that. 
A lot of drones have that today. And above my head, once again, is the longitude latitude. Pretty sweet, eh? Next one I'm gonna show you is the sport mode. I'm gonna take this far out and have it come back to me super fast. Here we go. Okay, so like shown at the beginning, to put it in sport mode, hit your settings, and right at the top one, go down until you see sport mode, and then put it on. There we go, we're in sport mode, and uh, get out of that. And now, full speed forward. Here we go, it's very fast. Here we go, sport mode, coming forward. Going over the fields with the water. This does have a waypoint mode on it. I never use waypoint mode for most things, but here we go, the first one. So you have beeline, in-flight history, so we'll just go beeline, which it shows it there, blah, blah, blah. So you get a map. Let me see, I have to zoom out here to show you the waypoint mode. And basically, it shows on the bottom left, drag to set a point of interest. So I'm gonna set the point of interest over here. So there it is, that's all good. Height, 14 meters. Actually, I better go higher because I have trees here. There we go, quite high, 22 meters. Uh, what do you want it to do at the destination? None, hover, record, and uh, record for 10 seconds or single. So I'm just going to uh, just say hover. I don't want any photos taken or bursts, okay. There I've set a second one, same thing, none, and a third one over here. There we go. All right, so we're all set to go. Three meters per second, it's very slow. Heading, free, exit, and go. So normally you could see it on the map taking place, but I'm just gonna go back into my drone here to see it flying because I don't know what it's doing because <laughs> I just hit a bunch of buttons quickly but there we go so you can see on my screen it's uh, filming away I can uh, can I still use the joystick I could still use the gimbal so I'm bringing it down nice I see somebody out there in the park cleaning up it looks like so it's at waypoint number one it's finished and now it's coming and going to waypoint number two right there I'll go back to my waypoint so you can see what it's doing there we are and it's gonna get to waypoint number two over there and then it's gonna go to waypoint number three and for all of the waypoints, it's gonna keep the point of interest pointing in the direction I told it to. And there it goes. So that's waypoints. I don't really use waypoints, but a lot of you do, so thought I'd show it. Next, I'll show you the five-way switch right here. You could set that to anything you want, all five directions, plus the push in. So watch this, if I go up, I get my maps, push it up again, I go away from the maps, push it left. I get my battery settings, push it left again, I go away from the battery settings, push it right. I get all my settings for the drone GPS compass to find out what the settings are. Push it right again, go out, push it down. And I should get the camera looking down. Push it down again and the camera should look back up. And if I push it in, I should get everything I recorded and pictures I've taken. And there we go. That's all the video and pictures from today. All right, next thing to show you really quick is some photos from this drone. So I'll take it up and take some photos. So I should mention as well, some of the photos I took were in HDR and I put on the photo that you saw if it was taken in HDR. Speaking of that, let me show you the different color modes. So let me face me over here. Okay, so I'm gonna show you some differences with the Vivid, the HDR and the different color modes. So this is normal. This is what you normally get. You fly the drone, you leave the settings on auto. This is what you'd see. Everything looks pretty good on my image here. Blue, blue, blue pants, red shirt, hat. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna switch it now to HDR. All right, now I'm in HDR. Did you see any difference? The drone's still in the same spot. And uh, here I am, it's probably tracking a little bit. I'll just move myself more to the center. But once again, do my shoes look bluer, pants, top? Here, I'll put images side by side. Non-HDR and HDR, do you see a difference? And finally, this is the vivid mode. HDR is off. This is normal shooting video with video mode on for the color aspect. So is the red redder, bluer shoes? You know, can't really tell. Here, let me show you normal again and video side by side and you'd see which one you like the better. So check out side by side. All right, since we're over here and we're on low battery, I'm gonna do a quick return to home. This does have precision landing. It has to find the landing pad. So let me hit the return to home button, which is this one down here. 
and it will go back home. It's gonna go up to my height, which I set it at 35 meters, and there we go. So there we go, it's detected the landing pad. Look at the bottom, it says landing pad detected. So as it comes down, it knows where that is. It's looking for a circle, basically. So the circle is what it's looking for, and as soon as it finds the circle, it will land on it, as long as the circle is close to where it took off. So it's kind of close, there we go. The wind might push it aside, but uh, let's get close and see what it's gonna do. There we go, it sort of went aside. And I'm back here, let me just sit down. It's kind of hot out here today. I'm glad the sun came out because it wasn't looking too good. So what did you think of the 2020 version? A lot like the previous version, but more refined. So if you don't have a Fimi, you probably want to get the 2020 version. As I said, the price range is between 450 and 500. I'm going to put this down because it's causing glare. So uh, there's an unboxing coming next. You'll want to see what comes in the box and all the goodies. It's pretty much the same as the previous version. If you have questions about the 2020 version, post them below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate that very much. And if you want to see many more reviews on all types of drones, you know, medium price ones, expensive ones, and low budget ones, just post comment below and I will get to them in the future. It is a long summer. All right guys thanks for watching catch you in the next video take care and now a super quick unboxing of the Fimi X8 SE 2020 edition here we go spin this sideways and open it up and let's see what's in the box there we are you get safety instructions and your instruction manual here here we have the drone here we have the controller taking a look at the drone it looks identical to the previous version I don't see any difference they spared no expense with the gimbal holder again just a piece of foam looking at the bottom you can see the one ultrasonic sensor and an optical flow sensor and here's the original and I'm just gonna take a look you see they're identical identical even the camera on the front looks identical to the original this is the original and this is the new model and when I say everything looks identical I'm talking from physical dimensions and appearance so there we go the fronts look the same the top it's pretty much all the same they didn't even change the markings on it so the one with the props is the old one because it's all set to go and the reverse and the batteries will fit from one to the other there's a side view this is the original brushless motors foldable props which go on top and uh, let's see the arms micro usb slot down there usb port also your wi-fi switch or your rc controller switch plus your bind button and no ports on the other side here's the battery from the original fimi and here's the new battery let's just check it out see if they are Identical. see if they changed anything because they did increase the flight time this is the original battery both batteries are 11.4 volts 4500 milliamp hours and just to show you the original battery fits in the new drone there we go front of the drone no obstacle avoidance sensors and you do have your three axis gimbal which is really good so three axis gimbal means if your drone is in the air and the wind is causing it to do this see how the camera stays straight if your drone is in the air and the wind is causing it to do this see how your camera can stay straight and of course if your drone's in the air pointing in one direction and the yaw is causing it to go a little bit side to side to see how your camera can stay straight that's a three axis gimbal and the props are the idiot proof kind so on one set of props you have little dashes right here and the other ones you don't you just match them up with the motors match the dash to the dash now that i put the props on the drone i can't tell them apart so i put a sticker on this one that says 2020 no sticker on this one so here we go the original let's weigh it 800 grams and the new 2020 model 760 grams ah maybe that's how they got the flight to go a little bit longer here we have the controller and it is identical looking to the previous one it probably has a little bit more technology inside because the range is longer and the same thing you can put an ipad mini in there and that's about it and a very large cell phone a lot of people love this controller but the larger the item in the center the farther away your hands are for the joysticks so in this location is where you put your phone or tablet your joysticks are right here for storage you put them on the little joystick holder so everything Thing works that's your power button that's your return to home button that's your takeoff and land button this is your five-way joystick does some pretty cool things tennis yes they are real and long in the front you have two jog dials that's your gimbal up and down and that's your EV exposure evaluation and you have two buttons on the bottom in the front you have your connector for your cell phone and you have your charge port speaking of connections for your phone you get every type of connection possible so if you have an iphone or an android phone of any kind you will be able to connect it no problem charging system appears to be identical it does come with the european cable and it does come with the adapter for north america you do get two spare props and this brings me to the end of my review of the fimi x8 se 2020 snow white edition at least that's what i call it very white look at how white it is on the screen hope you enjoyed this video if you did 
did, please give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate that very much. If you have questions on this drone that I did not cover, post them below and I will get back to you. If you would like to buy this drone, I will put links below to where I have found it on the web and you can check it out and see if it's for you. I'm sure it comes in at different prices. But for now, I say thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it and I will catch you in the next one with many more drone reviews. Take care.